Welcome back for another repair with Mammoth Mend. Today we're going to be putting together a Motion XTXL. This is an 18 cubic foot cargo box. Uh, we have a really long crack, about four and a half feet long, and also a crack here on the edge. So as always, we always start by taking the lid off the cargo box and flipping it over and doing all the repairs on the inside. That way we uh, you don't have to see the repairs. Um, all you're going to see on the outside is uh, just the original crack, but you're not going to see the repair. Here we're taking off the end hinges. First we start by popping off the plastic caps with a small screwdriver and drilling off the rivets. Now we don't need to drill the rivets all the way out, just the caps of the, of the rivets. And then at the other end we're going to do the same thing. Unfortunately, we can't use these uh, black plastic inserts again just due to the fact that uh, standard rivets won't work, or, or shall I say, the rivets that they use in the factory are different than what we uh, standard issue meant. What we do want to avoid is the rivet spinning. So if it does, turn the drill to the side a little bit, shoot it into the side, and it typically stops it from spinning. Or what you can do is stop for a bit, let the plastic cool, because we don't want to blow it out and uh, make a larger hole. So here we have two keys. So all we're doing is put one key in one side, open it like you normally would, put the key in the other side, open that side, and then just putting a hand in the center and lifting it up and uh, flipping it over. Now, the plastic is extremely sharp. It may not seem like it is, but once those uh, plastic is uh, broken, it can be uh, rather very sharp in the aspect of cutting your hands and everything. So when I'm trying to push it back together, a lot of times it wants to, it's going to fight you and pop, and you're trying to pop it back into to a side-by-side -side position rather than one or the other on top of each other. So with the, uh, typically do two styles of putting the box or holding it in position so we can do our repair. One is just a typical duct tape on the back side um, of the opposite side we're going to repair. The other is a wire repair. Basically what we've done here is we've went about an inch away from the crack perpendicular to it and each side. And what we're going to do is string a wire up through the bottom and into the box. Uh, you can do it either way, but obviously if we did it the other way, as we'll see in a little bit, it makes it uh, nearly impossible to uh, to tighten the wire to pull it together. So this is the, the best method. So as far as placement of where to drill, typically it's just gonna be, oh, I don't know, about eight inches from the end, and then uh, do it again. You can see I did it at a curvature of, of a peak where it's changed in directions. Um, it just seems to be what we've worked with and, and it works best. We just string the wire up through there and uh, we're just going to use an old fencing technique of basically taking a flat nose plier and each one of the leads from the wire on each side of the of the uh, pliers and then twisting it. Here what I actually did is twist it the opposite direction of twisting it when I first started so um, that's what's happening there and you can see I'm constantly feeling with my hands very slowly and delicately uh, getting it back in place and then twisting the wire which is pulling it closer and closer together. Now I'm not trying to get the final result on this first twist. All I'm trying to do is just get it closer and then work my way systematically from one end to the other. Now what I normally do is drill all the holes from one end to the other, but due to the camera angle I wanted to get you a little closer to see what's happening here. So um, I'm doing a couple and then we're going to reset the shot so we can see the other ones. Um, I just didn't want a shot that was too far away and made it difficult to understand what was happening here. Now you can see here that we're uh, showing the, the other extent of the repair. The repair we just did is to the right of what we're seeing here. Doing the same thing, about an inch away from the crack, perpendicular to it, 
just drill in random holes. Um, now, it may be counterintuitive as to, you know, we're trying to repair the box, not put more holes into it. But in the end, um, this is really by far the best method uh, of doing this. And you have to remember, this is the top of the cargo box. Nobody's going to see it. It's on top of your car. It's, it's not an issue. And, you know, the worst thing for us to have happen is when we do the repair, then anything slips and, and comes apart or anything like that. Um, it makes all of our work that much more difficult to go back and redo it. So um, this, is, this is only just an eighth inch drill hole um, and the wires. And this is what we found is the best, by far the best method of a guaranteed repair and the placement where we want it. A nice physical repair. What you don't want to do is also make your wires too short. Um, it just makes it difficult and uh, to get them twisted and whatnot. Uh, granted, we don't want to get crazy on length, but you want something that you can handle with your hands. Now you can see here that um, I'm doing it, you know, about eight inches from the end of the crack. The crack goes to where the box starts going vertical and up just a hair. And um, I'm also using my hands once again to align align the crack. It's going to be your best method of detecting when things are lined up. And I have my hand on the bottom side and I can kind of feel when things aren't going right. And we're just slowly tightening it up. We're going to tighten this one up. And uh, this is uh, the second one. This, If we were to count them from right to left, uh, I'm working on number two. And here's number four. We're just tightening it up. Not getting crazy, not looking for a final result here. We're just pulling each one of them in just a little bit at a time so that we can monitor the alignment. Now this repair is rather extensive. When It may look overwhelming in the whole aspect of everything, but if you just break it down to the individual pieces of what it is, um, don't think of it as so much as, oh, there's a four foot crack from here to there. Don't think of it that sense. As much as there's just a crack here, we're just going to repeat the process over and over. And when we put them all together, it's going to make a nice seamless repair. And this is where you're going to want to take your time and align it. Uh, the actual putting down the repair is rather fast. Uh, most of your time is going to be spent uh, doing prep work. Here I'm shaving off from when the box sheared, uh, some of the plastic uh, got bent out of the shape. And we're just shaving it off because we don't want the, uh, the fiberglass standing up or anything like that. We're looking for a very uh, smooth repair. And as I mentioned, you're never going to see this repair for the most part unless you open the box and look up into the lid. On the outside, it's just going to be a, uh, it's going to look just like a, a simple crack as far as that goes. Now here we have the uh, repair on the side. Um, you can note here the crack already wants to stay in its position that I'm happy with. So all I'm doing is taking a piece of tape. Uh, Pressing down on one side and then stretching it over so that it pulls it together uh, to just assure that when I do the repair, if it gets bumped or the lid gets moved a little bit, that it's not going to go out of place. Uh, here, I'll show you later on as to why I'm doing this. Um, it's kind of a backdrop for our repair. And it'll make sense here in a little bit why we're doing that. For this repair, we're going to use a large repair kit, which is 12 inches by 24 inch fiberglass, a 16 ounce solvent cement, and two pairs of gloves. Also remember to wear your gloves, respirator, and goggles when doing any repairs. Okay, so I've taken a Sharpie now and highlighted the crack from one end to the other. And then I've taken the fiberglass and cut them in about four inch wide strips. And all I'm doing is here is now taking the uh, cement solvent 
and I want to go from the beginning of the crack out probably about two inches at least. So I'm putting the uh, solvent cement down. Uh, I must I didn't go far enough for the cement and then just laying it over smoothing it out starting from the inside of the fabric and working your way out and you can see the circles are where the wires are I just wanted to make it a little clear as to what's going on here and also with a dauber what I do is typically get a little bit on my dauber and then uh, run a streak down the middle and then spread it out to the side and if you ever get any hairs from the fiberglass just hanging in there whatnot, just roll it right back into the fabric because that's only going to make it stronger in the end. Um, the fabric gains its strength from uh, the weave going in multiple directions. So the solvent cement is actually a chemical weld which actually uh, melts the surface of the cargo box. So when you first put it down, it's dissolving it just slightly very very lightly on the surface and then we're putting our fabric down and then we're putting another solvent cement on top of that and um, this dries extremely fast um, it's a matter of if I put my hand back where I first did my first uh, repair it would be surface dried now it's not cured there is a difference I can touch it and I'm not going to get into the black stuff on my gloves but it's definitely not cured uh, each layer we put down and that's what we're doing each here is putting some cement down fiberglass and then another layer um, that needs to cure for 24 hours to get us the correct bond um, when I say that I can touch it that just means the immediate skin on the surface has uh, off gassed and so so that is dry in that sense but it's definitely not cured underneath it with my paddle I'm using there's there's two different edges one is a 90 degree and one's a radius uh, I definitely like to use the radius so it doesn't snag on the fabric and also one thing to remember with these repairs that we definitely don't want to do them in any living space where uh, there's any pets or people living uh, this has an off gas and obviously we're more in a respirator and it's good for that but you definitely don't want to do it inside your house if you're in a garage open the garage door to vent it out definitely don't do it in your basement try it if you have an uh, out shed or anything like that but definitely not in your house I also don't recommend doing it uh, outside what happens is the UV light uh, hits it and it starts bubbling immediately now if you have to you can do it um, under shade tree under a tent or something like that but then I would immediately put a piece of cardboard over top of the, uh, the whole lid of the cargo box or something like that uh, so that the, the Sun doesn't get down in the UV um, can penetrate it what will happen is it'll it'll blister and uh, you'll get um, some undesirable results as far as that goes so here you can see where I'm doing the edge uh, repair I'm, I'm taking the paddle and, and pushing the fabric into all the uh, curvature of the box now the reason I did put that tape up high is that I don't have to try and work the fabric right to the edge as far as that goes cut it and get it lined up what we do is we just shoot it all the way up and we put the solvent on both sides of it actually paint the um, duct tape and then uh, put the fabric up there and then paint over it and then what we're going to do later is we're going to peel the tape off and just take a knife and slice it right off it makes it extremely easy now here what we're doing is removing the wires the repairs that we've done are now strong enough to hold the box uh, in place. So I'm just taking a wire cutter and snipping off what do we have on the surface. And then I'm just going to reach under the underside and pull the remaining U, the bottom half of the wire. And you can see I've already cut the little pieces to go in the places where the wires were and we're making them a little bit longer as, as I mentioned 
the more fabric you can get in there, the stronger it's going to be. No, our standard is you only need one piece of fabric if it's in a non-stressed area. Uh, the top is relatively non-stressed. There are areas that are more stressed than others. Uh, when you come to an edge, um, we definitely do a two, two patches as far as that goes. And also, um, um, right there by my chest, we call those side hinges. And on the end, they're struts or end hinges, they may be called. Uh, but when I have my hand on there, I call those side hinges because it can be a hinge. Um, if, if there's a crack around that in any area, I definitely do a double patch. So now we're just repeating the process over again. Uh, don't be alarmed by, as I said earlier, how big the repair is. It's just the same process over and over. I'm just putting a, the solvent cement down, putting the fabric down, straightening it out, and then putting the solvent cement over top of it. Just repeating the process. Putting my layer down, fiberglass. You see the fiberglass hanging off there? I'm just going to pull that right in there. And it's just going to be part of the box. Just remember, between each stage, we want to shave the cargo box down. Um, because once this all dries, it, uh, it gets extremely stiff. So, and so there's burrs that are hanging out and whatnot. So we want to shave those off because uh, when we, we're done, we don't want to have a, uh, a down jacket in there or a sleeping bag or anything that may be sensitive to snagging to catch on your jacket or anything like that and rip it. We want to have a smooth surface. Uh, it's not as critical on the top, but as you get down more to the side, as your, your items rest against it. But it's just a great practice to shave it all down between each practice. As you can see here, I'm doing the double layer, but it doesn't have to go down all the way. If you just do four or five inches down from the edge, you're fine. Uh, usually, you know, because the crack is most sensitive, it's going to start back up at the edge and not so much in the middle of the box as much as the weakest point, which is on the edge. Now I'm just going over and coating the areas from the first day uh, in between the patches that I just did. You could put as many layers down as you want, whether it's uh, many layers of fabric or as many layers of the um, solvent cement as you want. Now just note, the solvent cement's not going to last a very long time uh, due to the high volatility of the uh, agents inside of it. Now here I've peeled back the, or I am peeling back the duct tape. It doesn't stick to it at all. And it's stiff. So I wanted to paint it on both sides so that it remains stiff. Uh, if I try to cut that fabric without the uh, solvent cement in it, it just rolls over. It's like, well, it literally is trying to cut a with a razor knife, uh, just general fabric. It kind of bunches up and rolls with it. But if you make it uh, stiff, it's going to be easier to cut. Now there's going to be some fraying, but it's uh, from our experience, it's, it's much better than what it could be. And as I mentioned, between each layer, we're definitely shaving down the box. I like to use these uh, uh, razor knives, the thin ones, because they uh, conform to the shape of the box. Because uh, nothing's flat on this box, it's all curves. And I'm slowly running my hand over the box to feel where any burrs or anything may be. Uh, once again, this is double time, so it makes it look like I'm rather uh, quick with it, but actually I'm, I'm going rather slow. While doing this repair, we also realized that side hinge right there at my chest was loose. So we removed it, and we're going to re-rivet it, and we'll show you that here in a little bit. And now I'm just putting on my final coat. Very simple, just doing the same thing we've done before, just covering it the whole thing. I would like to point out that this product has a limited shelf life, so I would recommend using it up within a six month period. We do sell a reconstituting agent for this product, but we can find that at our store.
As you can see here, I'm getting up towards the edge of the cargo box on the edge and filling in those hairs that were shaved earlier on. So the next part we're going to do is the side hinge that was loose. Uh, as I was repairing the box, I noticed it was loose, so I drilled out the rivets. But we need to remove these tabs so that we can install our backing washer. During the repair, I noticed that the side hinge was loose, so we drilled out the rivets so that we could secure it tightly against the cargo box. To remove the tabs that are there, we just take a screwdriver and pry them off. They easily pop off and then our washer will be able to lie flat against the side hinge. And this is the final result from the inside. The repair is much stronger than the original box. If this box ever sustains damage again, it will actually go around the fiberglass to the weakest points, which is the plastic. Now we're ready to reassemble the cargo box. We just flip the lid over, noting that we have two keys in this cargo box, one in each side. So we're just placing the cargo box lid in position, pressing down on the far side, removing the key, and then pressing down the other side to make sure everything engages. To assemble the end struts, we're just going to open the cargo box and prop it up with something around 27 inches long. Now that the box is propped open, we can remove the remaining rivets from the strut. My preferred method for hanging on to the end piece is to use a vice grip. That way if the drill catches it all, it doesn't spin inside your hand. Once the rivet has mostly been disengaged, you can pull it from the backside with a pair of pliers. You may wonder why we drill out the rivets rather than prying the strut off of the post. On a few occasions we have done that and we've broken the post, the ball on the end that holds it to the cargo box. When this piece breaks, there's no replacement piece for it. So once again, here's a few more of those rivets left over. Uh, just take my vice grip, tighten it down, and then uh, drilling those out. And sometimes you have to use uh, pliers on the back side if it just starts spinning on you. All right, now we can uh, put everything back together. We're just going to line up the plate with the hole, put our plastic uh, protective piece on there. And we're using a, uh, an electric rivet gun, but uh, it's no different than a, a standard uh, pulling rivet gun as far as that goes. Now, you might be able to see that last rivet I did, there's a little post sticking up. 
or a piece that didn't break off smoothly, what you do is just take a anything, either a needle nose pliers or a screwdriver, and that part that has this point into there, and then just put it in, push it in, just pops right in, pops inside the rivet. And there you have the finished product. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, there's the crack, and right there are some drill holes from the, where the wires are. But overall, it's a, it's a great job, and this is going to be stronger than the original box because you have to think the box itself is just plastic. We do a lot of repairs at our shop, uh, probably five a week, and we've been doing this for quite an extensive period. Here it is on the edge, that crack. And uh, that's going to complete this repair. If you need more information, check out our site, Mammoth Mend. And we have all the tools and supplies that you need to repair your cargo box. Thank you.